hosts or guilt. Peter's child presents how a first level healer can heal ghostly phenomena. I was in a forest at night, a patient said. I felt three ghostly figures approach me and enter into me. It was disturbing. And ever since then, there have been many nights where I've been woken up feeling strange things happening. The patient continued. Some context for you before we go on. A student had brought a colleague to us. He was experiencing very weird stuff at night. So Devadara healers, what is the first step you begin with? So the first thing we did before asking him a single question was to do what we ask all Devadara healers to do, which is to start with an aura scan and to see for yourself what you think is going on. Now at the first and second level, what you can probably do with a certain degree of accuracy is to find out which part of the body or which chakra is giving the most trouble. So from that perspective, it was very clear that the navel area was very troubled. The second thing that we do is essentially, in our case, we trace back in time and figure out where the problem was coming from. And we realized that the problem was tracing back about three years ago. And when we told that to the patient, obviously his trust in us increased because that was roughly the time when the problem started. Now, you may not be able to do uh, being able to trace timelines back effectively when you're at the first few levels. So what would you do? Well, simply just ask. Ask the patient, when did the problem start? And then go back a year or two before that and ask him what life was like then. When we asked him what life was like then, the patient told us that he had actually gone for his father's funeral and he was very troubled. And he had gone to a nearby forest and when he had been in that forest, he had felt something very strange. And uh, In fact, as he related earlier, he said that he had felt some ghosts enter into him. Now, when we asked him a little bit more, we really realized that what the patient was feeling at that time was a lot of guilt because he had to be working in another country while his father was at home. Now, many times when uh, first level healers, second level healers encounter these patients with strange illnesses or experiences, you may get very shaken and feel that you're out of your depth. So before we go further, let's understand what it means when someone experiences ghosts. Very often, ghosts are fragments of a person's aura. So you're really haunted by yourself, by your fears. Poor digestion. Hormonal disturbances, poor sleep can also lead to somebody experiencing ghosts. Places with weird energy and weird histories are also areas where people often experience strange things. That leads us to the question, are ghosts real? Well, in our experience, based on near-death experiences, aura pictures, astral travel, reincarnational research, Direct encounters with ghosts, our answer is yes, ghosts are real. One in five Americans have had direct, vivid encounters with ghosts. While many Gestalt psychologists and paranormal researchers do hold that consciousness is more fluid and that consciousness can exist without bodies, the vast majority of scientists believe that ghosts are not real. For healers, in a sense, it does not really matter. 
Is it guilt and grief or guilt and grief attracting ghosts? For if we can heal the emotions, change body processes, ghostly fears will decline. And in this case, it was very clear that what was involved was the navel chakra. Second thing was clear is that what had triggered off this experience of ghosts was essentially a lot of guilt at the, that the person had for not being there when his father needed it. Now both of these things are very much within your ambit. And so very often when people talk about all these strange phenomena, we say, look, what, what is it that you need to do? You need to heal the energy body, the energy part, the chakra in this case, and you need to be able to, well, help the person deal with the emotions surrounding the whole event. In a safer healing process, you don't target the ghosts at all, but the patient's vulnerabilities. So what did we do? In one session, we gave the person a deep healing that helped him get his navel chakra back into order. We gave him advice that helped him deal with the guilt that he was carrying a little better. So that his working in another country, far from being something he should feel guilty about, was something that helped fulfill his father's dreams for him and his family. And last but not least, we could do nothing about his working hours. He works about 12 to 15 hours a day, six and a half days a week. Well, what we could do was give him a feeling that in three years or five years, he'd be able to shift levels. So he'd be an entrepreneur by himself and more in control of his destiny. Now, during the actual healing, here are a few steps that all our first level Devadara healers and Reiki healers should follow. And the first is to protect yourself. All this talk of weird phenomenon can you make you feel vulnerable. So you don't want to fall in. Second, use passive protection techniques like salt. And use it also post the session to empower your patient. Third, we've given you a range of empowering methods. For example, like bark flower remedies. Do give it to yourself and the patient if necessary. In this particular case, we had used, we had developed a mantra based on the patient's religion. You can do that too. For example, we had recently shared with you a video about Angel Gabriel. So we have empowered you with a lot of resources online and on our website creatorschild.com. So please use it. To summarize the steps, Heal the chakras, protect the patient's mind, address the emotional issue, affirm a positive future. And what about the ghosts, you may ask? Well, actually, we didn't need to bother about the ghosts at all. Because specifically, they were not really ghost ghosts. They were consciousness entities of a forest kind of a green way of life. He was in a very, he'd grown up with nature, with forests, and had associated peace with being in the forest. And yet his workplace for years was in a very dense urban environment. And so basically his survival need called to him patterns of consciousness which were more natural, which dealt with nature. 
he's far more content, far more optimistic and far brighter. From nights haunted by ghosts to a life centered around vibrant hope. Cautionary note, in some cases healing alone may not work and you may need advanced healing or medical help. Various countries and states laws regarding certain kinds of healings may apply. Thank you for subscribing to our channel, visiting creativechild.com and growing with God.